that resulted in the sp gupta's case being brought to the supreme court i was just an advocate with just 5 6 years experience and it was really great to hear at that time another eminent senior mr h m sirvai i distinctly remember in court number 2 the seven judges who were hearing the matter presided over by justice bhagavati and justice sirvai was constantly troubled by one of the very brilliant judges on the criminal side justice fazal ali he was constantly troubled many questions put then when he came out in the recess one of the youngsters like me asked him who is that judge who is troubling you he simply said oh fazul ali that is that is the with which he mocked saying that the questions which were put absolutely doesn't consider doesn't really matter to the point which was to be addressed before the court that apart now what we are in fact endeavoring to do here in this debate or in this conference mr shanti bhushan very rightly said that people are the masters they have given the constitution to themselves whatever must happen must result in meeting the needs and aspiration of the people i think that's absolutely the pillar of the democracy and probably if you had an occasion to read the constitution constituent assembly debates this was actually what was in fact thought of but did it really happen have we traveled have we distanced ourselves from the people who are the real masters mr shanti bhushan also referred about the judges in the recent past being appointed who are not of eminence integrity and intelligent we need to have a look well the first judges case advocate and records case and the second one which was a little improvement gave that opportunity to us because earlier the executives by the masters i remember distinctly after the first or rather second judgment was delivered when we were attending a conference in hong kong one of the american jurist and academician professor seeing a group of indian youngsters and other lawyers sitting he just came mockingly told us how oh, in your country or oh, judges appoint themselves what is this we told him that you must in fact before you say this i know your experience in your country is different as very rightly is pointed out there is a senate debate and other things but in our country the different kind of system this is the best because this assures us that there is no interference by the executive at any point of time because we were interested only in upholding the rule of law the administration of justice that is in fact the backbone on which we are all striving here whether it is x who appoints or y who appoints what we are all striving here as a lawyer as in the legal fraternity is to see that the rule of law prevails the 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 system of justice there is a quality but the question is after the judgment two judgments in the judges case have we really delivered to the people met the need of the people have we really delivered quality of justice because quality of justice is always associated with the quality of judges who are being appointed now what we are debating here we are debating that good number of judges who have been appointed in the recent past they don't they don't in fact they are not people of eminence they are not people of integrity because as very rightly mr krishnamani told in the previous session and also the other speakers that we find out of most of the judges 25 to 30 percent judges are mediocre or well they are at least i won't say that uh, with a dubious past but definitely not men of integrity that being the position did the collegium system failed us 
That's the point which we were. In fact, when this was being debated, probably the executive and the lawmakers thought this was the best opportunity to restore back. I still remember when this process was started the last month when we were all discussing. There were newspapers report saying that the way these bills are being presented, one is the Constitution Amendment Bill 128th, and wherein 124 was sought to be amended and a new class, one, Article 124A is sought to be inserted, wherein the primacy to the Judicial Appointment Commission is being given. The other is the Judicial Appointment Commission. Now, the endeavor was to see that we get the best of judges, but I read in the newspaper that the motive of the government, that's where it really pinches, motive of the government was not to get you the quality, quality justice or quality judges. They just want to retain the power to themselves which, we, which they lost so through this kind of legislation. I think we have eminent lawyers here. We will wait till the act is passed. Well, we know we have to get back to the court and then challenge this, which is going to happen. I'm 100% sure. The second thing which really troubled me and troubled all of us here, what was the great hurry? Is it that the judiciary really was, in the last two months, has gone from, say, um, an X um, um, quality to something like, say, absolutely zero quality? No, it's not so. Please remember, in the last one year, the Supreme Court has been intervening and, in fact, entertaining good number of public interest litigation, whether let it be a 2G scam or a Colgate scam. They are sure that the judges who would have no control under them would, in fact, go haywire and really create a problem to them. So in order to get back the power and in order to have committed judges, that's how, in fact, it was going on from 1975 to 1983. So, in order to stall that process, I see a very dangerous trend in the government in coming out with this legislation. They could have waited, they could have called the bar leaders, they could have held seminars, and they could have, in fact, studied the different system, as very rightly Mr. Prashant said about the system. In fact, the Pakistanis borrowed from us, and probably they, I think, after hijacking our ideas, they are, in fact, doing better. And we have seen the Malaysian system where things have been put in place. So I think what was the great hurry for our law minister to come out with this legislation, and that too, even the members of the houses were not given this bill in advance. It was just only... 48 hours before which, and they were just required to just raise their hand, which they always do in the parliament, without even understanding and appreciating what exactly is the bill is all about. What prevented them from talking to the legal fraternity? I'm really amazed. The law minister belongs to us. He is our brother, who, in fact, maybe after five years, we do not know, he may come back to us, but then he need to answer us that what he has done is absolutely an injustice, and he has, in fact, done something which I think what was done in the emergency. So I really condemn such an attitude and I would really require you guys to come in large number, debate in your area, discuss this in area because the second round after the bill, because very rightly Prashant said, it is a foregone conclusion that this bill is going to be, going to take place in, uh, take a shape in the nature of an act, in the probably in the next uh, session of parliament. So our responsibility starts. Maybe we will study whatever is the shortfall in the bill, whether in fact the judicial appointment commission or, uh, 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 bill, which will be transformed into an act, will really deliver. Because to me, I find that it is something like our old wine being put in the new bottle. There's absolutely nothing new. So whatever was the fallacy in the first or in the second, I think there is no improvement. So we really need to debate and maybe we take to the court and we in fact try to get whatever in fact 
probably our eminent lawyers, senior lawyers who are here, they'll be guiding us because we know most of the matters which we have taken. It was all at the instance of most of the eminent lawyers. And I, I, I am sure whatever is the shortfall which is being debated here, that will be probably put in the form of a petition and we will have a judicial pronouncement on this. Thank you. With this all-round performance, I declare this session to be end and I request Mr. Diwan to head for the next chair. Question. Let us give a big hand of applause to Mr. Shanti Bhushan. <laughs> Sir, we are all honored and privileged to have you here. And if at this age he struggles for the independence of judiciary and stands tall among us, why should not each one of us commit ourselves to fight for the independence of judiciary against this nefarious measure introduced by the government.